Welcome back this morning on Your Health. We're talking about gut health. Growing evidence suggests it might be directly linked to how you're sleeping at night. So we want to turn to Roshni Raj, a gastroenterologist and associate professor of medicine at NYU Langone Health and the author of the book, Gut Renovation. Still love the title, Dr. Raj. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah. Well, can we just do the basics here first? Because, yes. I, I mean, we hear more and more about the gut and microbiome. Right. And I, I honestly, what is that? What is it? What are we talking about here? Yes. Yeah, so when we talk about the gut and gut health, we're really talking about what's going on in your intestines, your digestive tract. And we're talking about that community of bacteria and other organisms that live there. And we now know exert influence throughout your entire body and really can affect every aspect of your health, including sleep. Okay. So let's talk about this connection between the health of your gut right and the health of your sleep yes so it's it's a two-way conversation and I think anyone who has acid reflux knows that you know you can definitely have disruption of sleep due to a digestive condition mm. such as that so if you're eating too late at night you might be waking up with bad heartburn that's a very clear example but what's not so obvious what's more subtle is what's going on with that bacteria and now research shows that if you have an imbalance of the good and bad bacteria in your gut that can actually cause poor quality sleep and a shorter duration of sleep in fact they've shown that certain species of bacteria are associated with insomnia and other species, the good ones, are associated with better sleep. But you said it's a two-way street. So how you sleep also affects your gut. 100%. So we know that when we're sleep deprived, we're not getting good sleep. We tend to crave unhealthy foods that are bad for our gut. So I know after a long shift in the hospital or you guys who work in TV, what you're craving the next morning is usually not a salad. I may have had Doritos <laughs> for dinner last night. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, so we, we crave unhealthy foods that are bad for our gut. We also have shown in studies that actually the balance of bacteria changes when you have someone who's sleep deprived for several weeks or a night shift worker, for example. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely both aspects need to be taken care of to have really optimal sleep and optimal gut health. Okay, let's do some takeaways here. What yeah. are some changes we can make to our diet? You mentioned the processed foods. Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, again, if you have acid reflux, you don't want to eat late at night. You want to be upright for at least two or three hours. But then in terms of keeping that gut in balance, you want to avoid the ultra processed foods. They actually have additives that are very toxic to your gut bacteria. Mm. You want to make sure you're avoiding sugar, limit alcohol, which is also toxic. And then really, I think the most important is to make sure you have a fiber rich diet. We know fibers is a great prebiotic. That means it serves as fuel for your good bacteria. And you also want to have foods that have actual probiotics, you know, the fermented good bacteria in the foods themselves. Let's talk about some of the fiber rich foods. Yeah, so berries are great. Raspberries are a great example. We know pears, apples, and then you want to make sure you have plenty of legumes in your diet. So lentils are important. Broccoli, of course, whole grains and oats. And How remember, much of this per day? So actually, it's more than you think. About 95% of Americans are not getting the recommended amount, which is 25 to 30 grams uh, per day, which is Think about it's about eight or nine apples. It's a lot. It's many wow. servings. So you want to make sure your plate, which every, with every meal, is predominantly full of fiber-rich foods. Hmm, okay. What about probiotics? So probiotics means good, healthy bacteria within the food, and you want to get a nice variety. So yogurt is the one everybody knows. Yogurt with live and active cultures. Kefir is a is a drink that also has fermented bacteria in it. Um, and then things like miso and sauerkraut and tempeh. You want to get at least one serving of probiotic-rich foods in your diet every day. Okay. Okay, and then how soon might you notice some positive changes? Yeah, you actually should notice positive changes in your sleep routine when you're doing all these things within a couple weeks. You know, your, your gut is a very dynamic system, and so it can change in a positive way quite quickly. Okay, and then quickly remind us on the bedtime routine. Yeah, we got to take care of our bedtime routine. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, again, limiting your food intake right before bed. You want to make sure that the lighting is conducive to sleep. So put the devices away at least an hour before bed. Studies have shown actually taking a warm shower one or two hours before bed helps regulate your body temperature, making it more conducive to good sleep. Noise is a big one. I use a noise machine every night. Um, and so these are things that will go a long way taking care of the sleep routine, which then positively affects your gut. All right, Dr. Raj, good education on the gut. Her Thank book you. is called Gut Renovation. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.